Isn't that the sweetest name that we know? Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And it's so sweet that we get to trust in him. I just want to be honest with you guys for a minute, if that's okay. It has been a week of ups and downs. We had issues last Sunday in worship. We had issues with the live stream. We couldn't get sound to work. And we were all frustrated by the time it was over. And uh, John was able to do something in the afternoon and got it going and got it uploaded again. And so people that were listening online could hear. Uh, We had an exposure of COVID-19 at the daycare uh, earlier uh, in the week, like Friday of the week before, Thursday, Friday, Uh, and we thought everything was good. We came in Monday morning. We're looking forward to a good week. Uh, The Lord had some ministry opportunities, and bam, just like that, we called the Department of Health, had to shut the place down for two weeks. And then Wednesday night rolled around. We had great Bible study, even in the midst of uh, the daycare kids not being able to come to uh, Kid Venture. We still had a great group of kids here on Wednesday night. And God was like, I told you, if you just trust in me. And then Thursday, I wake up and Ford's having problems with his leg and He had been jumping off of his scooter on Tuesday night and kind of complained of his leg all day Wednesday and wound up having to take him to the doctor. And thankfully it was nothing broken. But uh, when I saw my two-year-old walking like this, my three-year-old, I mean, he's stiff-legged. I knew something had to be done. I had to take him to the doctor. And so we did that and got that all taken care of. But I just got to be honest with you, it's been a week of ups and downs Uh, The Lord would definitely show up in the midst of the ups, uh, but we would question ourselves in the downs. How many of you ever had weeks like that, where it was like you take two steps forward and what, three steps back? We kind of felt like that's what happened this week. And as I was thinking about the lyrics to the first song that we sang this morning, as I've listened through it this week, even in the midst of those struggles, it says... I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that just that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. We can see all of this stuff happen. We saw Satan fall like fire like fire. We we saw all of these things. I, I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle is that my name is written in heaven. I'm registered there because I'm a believer. And no matter how bad my week is, no matter how many ups and downs that I have, no matter how many peaks and valleys that I go through, I'm promised a place in heaven. I'm promised that one day I will get to spend eternity with Jesus. I believe in signs and wonders. I have resurrection power. Still the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. My praise belongs to you forever. And throughout the week, God has just put different people in my life. When we were down in those valleys, when I was at the doctor's office with Ford on Thursday, there's this sweet lady who works at the uh, registration counter. And I see her just about every time I take the boys to the doctor. Uh, But I haven't seen her the last couple of times. And I was standing there waiting for Ford to get his x-ray. And I heard this voice come from the back counter said, Hello, Mr. Beck. I turn around, and there's that sweet lady. And I don't even know her name. And we got to talking, and she was like, it's been so long since I've seen you. I think it's been a year and a half. And I said, well, finally, we're not having to bring my boys to the doctor every other week because they're getting something. Uh, And so it's been a while since I've been here. But it's so good to see you. And we got to talking. We got to talking about the state of the world. And I started telling her about all of the things that we were doing and how what we were doing at church and how we were trying to social distance and wear masks. And she reminded me, she said, those things are good. She said, but pastor, have y'all been praying? Have y'all been asking God to protect you? Have y'all been reminding yourselves about the promise that God has that we don't need to live in fear, but instead trust in Jesus And we got to talking a little bit more and 
Everything that I came up with, she said, have you prayed about that? You know, what you're doing is great, but what about praying about it too? I was like, okay, God, what are you trying to tell me? And while we do need to take into consideration all of those things that we're doing to prevent the spread of the virus and to prevent different things, church, I think we also have to pray. And we have to remind ourselves that we have a Savior who loves us. We have that Jesus who is so sweet that we can trust in Him. He's shown His grace and His mercy to us time and time and time again. And church, even when I'm up and even when I'm down, even when I'm on the peak and even when I'm in the valley, my name is registered in heaven. And I pray that that's our testimony this morning. And so no matter how many ups and downs we have, we can trust in the name of Jesus to be our living hope and to be our eternal resting place, our eternal answer to all of life's questions. And so this morning, we're going to continue our walk through the book of Acts. And you're like, well, how does all of that relate to Acts? Well, I want you to see this morning how that relates to Acts. If you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, I want you to open to Acts chapter 11. We're going to begin in verse 1 in just a few moments. But i got to be honest with you, as I was going through the week this week and going through the ups and the downs and the hills and the valleys, and I was studying this passage of Scripture, and I've, I've, I've been reading ahead and studying ahead a few weeks so that I would have time to prepare. And as I was doing that this week, I almost came to a place where I skipped this section of verses. Because you'll see in just a moment that it's basically the exact same thing that we've looked at the last two weeks. It's the story of what happened with Peter and Cornelius. The difference is, is in this particular monologue, Peter has gone back to Jerusalem. If you remember, uh, he went and he was with the Gentile people. And once all of the, uh, that happened, all of the story was told, they asked him to stay a while. And he wound up staying with them a while. And now we will see in just a moment that Peter has ventured back to Jerusalem. And he's gone back to be with the apostles and the brothers. His other Jewish brothers. And while it's the same story, this is his report to them. And what I really want us to see, the most important part, is their reaction to the story. The way they reacted to the report that Peter brought to them. And when I got to thinking about the week and all of those things, God would not let me pass by these 18 verses of Scripture without preaching them this morning. And so if you've turned your book, your Bible, to Acts chapter 11, we'll begin in verse 1. It says, Now the apostles and the brothers who were throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision party... Now what I want you to do is think about... It wasn't a party where they were going to circumcise people. I saw a bunch of faces look at me when I said that. Think about it like a political party. There's a group of people who believe that circumcision is a requirement for salvation. And that's what it's talking about here. The circumcision party criticized him. Those people who believe that you had to be circumcised in order to have salvation in Christ alone criticized him saying, You went to the uncircumcised men and ate with them? But Peter began and explained it to them in order. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, something like a great sheet descending, being let down from heaven by its four corners. And it came down to me, looking at it closely, I observed animals and beasts of prey and reptiles and birds of the air. And I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, By no means, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But the voice answered a second time from heaven, What God has made do not call common. Do not call unclean. 
This happened three times, and all was drawn up again into heaven. And behold, at that very moment, three men arrived at the house in which we were, sent to me from Caesarea. And the Spirit told me to go with them, making no distinction. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. And he told us how he had seen the angel stand in his house and say, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will declare to you a message by which you will be saved. You and all of your household. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them just as on us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could stand in God's way? When they heard these things, notice their response. They fell silent and they glorified God saying, Then to the Gentiles also God has granted repentance that leads to life. Let us pray. God, we thank you for today. God, we thank you that because of our relationship with you, God, we have a testimony. God, we were uncommon, we were unclean people who were in need of a Savior. God, you sent your Son so that we could have a relationship with you. God, so that we could have the promised hope of eternal life. The grace and the mercy that you showed us when you sent your Son, perfect as he was to this earth to live and to die a cruel criminal's death, God. So that we could have a relationship with you. Lord, what a picture of grace and mercy. God, in that moment, we saw Satan fall like fire. We saw the darkness run for cover. And God, when your son uttered those words on the cross... It is finished. God, we had the opportunity to be registered in heaven. So Lord, thank you for that. God, thank you for sending your son to this earth. Thank you for giving us the gift of the Holy Spirit, God, as believers in you. God, that he would lead us and guide us and direct us on this journey that we're on called life, God. And Lord, I pray this morning that we would see a couple of things from this passage of Scripture that we as Christians should do in our daily life. That we should be willing to surrender to your call even as Peter did. Even when it makes no sense, God. Help us to be as willing as Peter. Lord, it's in your gracious and loving heavenly name we pray today. Amen. As you can see here, Peter is reporting the things that had happened, that had gone about over the last couple of weeks with Peter and Cornelius to his brothers and and, and the brothers and the apostles here in Jerusalem. I'm sure that as Peter returned to Jerusalem, he had lots of questions in his mind. He had seen the persecution. He had experienced the persecution. And now he was going back to tell these people that this salvation, this grace was not only for the Jews, but also for the Gentiles. And that he had received this word from the Lord. I can only imagine what his fear level was. What he thought was going to happen As he went back and he shared this report with the people. But by the end of what Peter was sharing with them, their hearts were changed. They went from criticizing him to falling silent and glorifying the name of the Lord and saying, if then this is true, God has granted repentance to them as well. This repentance that leads to life. Church, the people in Jerusalem could have responded in a multitude of ways. They could have lashed out at Peter. They could have persecuted Peter over this. 
But instead, God changed their hearts. And because of that change of heart, friends, today, we have an opportunity to have this same relationship. This relationship with Jesus that comes through the resurrection. And I want to give you two things that as believers this morning, we see in this passage of Scripture that we should be doing in our daily life. So number one, as Christians, we are called to grow. That's real easy, right? We're called to grow. What does that look like? How do I grow? Peter had to realize that his being religious didn't impress God. Peter had to realize that following the law, following the the traditions, following the rules, didn't impress God. Our coming into this place and sitting in seats and walking out and not leaving changed people doesn't impress God. In the same way, That God was not impressed with Peter's rule following. Me going out and following all the rules but not praying and asking God for guidance and wisdom and understanding does not impress God. You and I don't get any bonus points from God when we act spiritual. But we turn around and we walk out and there's no change in our life. There's no special accolades for us simply going through the motions. God has called us to become like Him. To grow and to to live in Him. Just as we grow physically, we are to grow spiritually as well. We are to mature in Christ. And this morning, I want to give us a list of a few choices That a mature believer makes versus a non or immature Christian would make. Teaching others rather than just being taught is a decision that a mature Christian would make over an immature Christian. Now I'm not saying that everyone in this classroom needs to rush out and sign up to teach a Sunday school class. It's not what I'm saying. Not everybody's called to do that. We all have our own gifts. We all have our own abilities. I'm not saying that everyone needs to rush out and sign up to lead children in children's church or keep kids in the nursery. That's not what I'm saying. Everybody has their own gifts and abilities. But what I'm saying, I believe God's Word tells us here, is that we are to live out our experience with Christ. How do we do that? We grow in His Word. We grow in our relationship with Him so that we can go and tell the world. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. Another thing that a mature Christian would do versus an immature Christian is developing a deep, a depth of understanding rather than struggling with the basics. Rather than always getting caught up in the basic nitpicky things, as mature believers we dive deep into God's Word. We learn it. We live it out. We do what it's calling us to do. We have experiences like Peter had. And we trust that those are from the Lord. Another one, self-evaluation rather than self-criticism. One more, seeking unity rather than promoting disunity. That's a hard one sometimes in a Baptist church. To seek unity rather than cause disunity. Because there's lots of things that we can cause disunity about. We can throw our titles, we can... Talk about the committees that we're on and the fact that we do this and we do that. And that person's not doing that. Church, we must seek unity rather than promote disunity. We have to desire spiritual challenges rather than desiring entertainment. We can't be coming here every week, week after week after week, expecting something better than the week before. We often say that in the culture that we live in today, what happens on this stage every week needs to be better than the week before. Because if it's not, we won't grasp the attention of people because we are such an entertainment-driven society that people are wanting to be entertained. And if we can't be better tomorrow than we were today, then we lose 
that ability. We need to have careful study and observation rather than opinions and half-hearted efforts. We need to have an active faith rather than cautious apathy and doubt. We need to have confidence rather than fear. We need to have feelings and experience evaluated in the light of God's Word rather than experiences evaluated according to feelings. So essentially, church, we need to root ourselves in God's Word and grow. We need to become more like Him every day in everything that we do. We don't need to let our emotions take over. We need to let God take over. And so church, the first thing that I want us to see is that we must grow. But the second thing I think this passage of Scripture tells us that we have to do is we have to go. We must go. We grow and we go. The Great Commission tells Christians to go. What are you doing to help reach people with the gospel before they die and go to hell? God came to you. He came to me when I needed Him the most. He did not withhold Himself and He did not withhold the good news from me when I needed His repentance. I heard Miss Brenda say this morning, we pray that God would draw more to Him. He drew Himself to me in my, latest, in my, in my darkest times. And we must be willing to go and to share. To the first believer in the first church, you and I were unfit for the good news. Because we were Gentiles. We're not of Jewish descent. Peter's first inclination as a good Jewish man was to withhold the gospel from people like you and from me. But instead, God revealed himself in a vision to him. And God had other plans and Peter followed those plans. Of course, if, God, if, the, if the gospel is not withheld from us, then we should not want to withhold it from others as well. If we have had the opportunity to experience the life-changing salvation that the gospel provides for us, we must be willing to go and to tell that to others. So you say, well, how do I present the gospel? How do I share the gospel? I think it's pretty easy. We prepare the way. When you or I want to tell others about Jesus, we need to smooth out the road first. Jesus told us to love our neighbors. This is a lot of where our vision at Mount Pisgah Baptist Church comes from, strengthening relationships with God, His church, and the world. We believe that in order to really reach people for the gospel, we need to be intentional. We need to be about relationship building. It's not just going up with my thick King James Bible and knocking someone on the head with it and expecting them to come to, to salvation in Christ. I must experience life with you. And I must tell you, <coughs> excuse me, this has been the hardest part of the pandemic time for me is not being able to live life with you. Not being able to come alongside you all the time and do life together. It is one of the hardest things for me ever to do to sit on this stage and not to mingle with one another. But our leadership team feels like that's the best thing so that I don't infect you and you don't infect me because if I'm infected, then things shut down. Or we have to find somebody else to come preach. If John gets infected, we have to find somebody else to come lead worship. And so this has been the hardest part for me of the pandemic. I know there are some who have said that I'm staying on the stage because I just don't want to mingle with you. I don't want to be around you. Church, I want you to know that's the hardest thing for me is to not be able to do that because I'm such a relational person. We must prepare the way of the gospel by loving people and praying for them and praying with them. Secondly, we have to know the way. That goes back to the growing part. We prepare the way, then we know the way is how we share the gospel. So what will I say to them when they are ready to hear about God? Church, let me tell you, it's not about walking through every verse, the right scripture in this book. That time will come. But that song that we sang a little while ago, My Testimony, that's what they need to hear. 
They need to hear how God came into you and changed you and made you a new person. If you were a follower of Jesus, you haven't always been one. You didn't wake up one day and you were a believer. There was a life change that happened. You didn't come out of the womb that way. There was a moment in time when God changed you, set you apart. The Bible teaches us that everyone must turn to God from a position of recognizing themselves as a sinner. The story of how you recognized yourself as a sinner and turned to Jesus for forgiveness is your story. You have to know the way. You have to know how God changed you. How He set you apart so that you can share that life-changing experience with others so they can see that once you were dead in your sin, just like they were, and through the grace of God, He changed you. So we have to prepare the way. We have to know the way. And thirdly, we have to show the way. Keep lifting up Jesus to them. Keep praying for them. Be ready to share your story with them whenever they ask. And know that you can handle life differently than most people. I often tell you this. Preach the gospel and when necessary, use words. Preach the gospel with the way that you live, with the way that you love people, with the way that you act, with the things that come out of your mouth, with the actions of your heart. Preach the gospel in all things that you do. That goes back to the growing. As we grow in Christ, we become more like Christ and we give out more of Christ. Have you ever heard the saying, what comes in is what comes out? As we read God's Word, as we meditate on God's Word, as we pray, as we spend time with Him, we become more like Him. That is what will eventually become the overflow of who we are. It will become a part of our everyday life. It will become a part of strengthening relationships with God, His church, and the world. As we strengthen our relationship with God, we grow in our faith. We grow in our relationship with others. As we strengthen our relationship with the church, we're going out and we're telling, we're fellowshipping with one another, we're holding each other accountable. And then as we strengthen our relationship with others, we are experiencing the go part. We grow in God, we grow together, and then we go and share the gospel with the lost world. And so church, this morning as I close, I want to ask you, what if you had an experience like Peter? I can't imagine the trance that he was in and the dream that he had. Where the sheep came down and the animals were there and he felt like God was calling him to kill and to eat these animals. I can't imagine the fear that must have wrought in him when he saw that happen. To take everything that he had known for his entire life and flip it upside down and show him a different way. Church, it's kind of the same with us though. When Jesus comes to us and He calls us to Him, He calls us to repentance, we take everything that we've lived for because we were living for the world apart from Jesus and we flip it upside down and now we live for Him. We've become His child and we're to grow and we're to go. And so church this morning, as I close, I want to ask you two questions. I want you to ponder these things. Are you growing as a Christian? Are you diving into God's Word? Are you studying? Or are you praying? Are you spending time meditating on God's Word? Are you trying to become more like Him? Are you surrounding yourself with people who are holding you accountable? Are you strengthening relationships with God and with the church so that you become more like Him? And then secondly, church, are you going as a Christian? 
Oftentimes we think about going as going on a mission trip. Going on an organized time, whether it be in the country or outside of the country, to share the gospel. But church, friends, we are called to an everyday act of obedience to go and to share the gospel. It's not just about an organized mission trip. And so if you say today, well, I can't go on a mission trip. How do I go as a Christian? Friends, we go in our everyday life. We go as an overflow of the abundant grace that God has showed us. We share that grace. We share that story with others as we go and tell the world about Jesus. So are you growing and are you going? I want to leave you with those two questions this morning. Would you pray with me today? God, I thank you for today. God, I thank you for this story of Peter. God, I thank you for these people who you called and who you set apart to do your work. God, I thank you for the response that the people in Jerusalem had when Peter came back. I thank you for the change of heart that they had. They went from criticizing him to a moment where they fell silent and began to glorify you. And so God, I pray this morning, if there's one in this room today who doesn't know you personally, God, I pray that they would fall silent. Hear your word. Ask for forgiveness. And turn and run and glorify your name. If you're here this morning and that's you, If God's knocking on your heart this morning, if God is drawing you to Him this morning, all you have to do is ask Him. Say, Jesus, forgive me. Let me experience the forgiveness that you meant for me when you died on the cross. Lord, I am a sinner. And I need your grace. Come and live in me today. If there's one here today who has accepted Christ, but they haven't turned in their journey, you haven't begun to grow, you haven't allowed the Holy Spirit to come and indwell in you and to lead you and to guide you, and to direct you. God wants you to experience Him. But you have to listen. You have to be willing to grow. You have to be willing to strengthen your relationship. You have to be willing to surrender your life to Him. Maybe you need to come to this altar and pray. Maybe God's calling you to unite with Mount Pisgah Baptist Church as we are strengthening relationships with God, His church, and growing together and holding each other accountable so that we can go and love our community so that we can share the love of Christ with them so that every lost sinner would come to know Jesus. If you feel God's called you to be a part of that, we would love to welcome you into our family. We'd love to welcome you to be a part of what God's doing here at Mount Pisgah Baptist Church. Wherever you are today, if you've prayed to receive Christ for the first time this morning and ask Him into your heart, Or if you know that you are growing and going in the name of Christ. I pray that if you need to do business with God, 
You wouldn't walk out of here today without doing that. These altars will be open. I'll be at the front. Praise team and band are going to lead us in one last song. Surrender to go and to grow to Jesus. Lord, we thank you and we love you. And it's in your name that we pray today.